Whilst I've got the starter motor off my car and the EGR moved out of the way, I thought it'd be a good opportunity just to quickly show you um, the vacuum system, um, just so you can work out for yourself and you see for yourself how all the pipe work uh, joins together. I think some people, even though I've tried to explain it as best I can, uh, they get a little bit confused what goes where. So we'll start at the beginning on the right hand side of the engine and, uh, and that's the vacuum pump and you can see this this big pipe here that's for the brake booster and that's going into the vacuum pump just there and if I can get an angle just down let's see if we can see that pipe I'm moving there that fits onto the vacuum pump there's like a nipple looks like a, a brake caliper bleed nipple on the vacuum pump and that supplies vacuum to that pipe and then this is how it all then fits together so vacuum is supplied to this pipe here this pipe goes down and then it goes into a T piece just there one of the T's goes down and feeds the turbo control valve TCV just here. That then in turn switches the vacuum on and off to the engine mounts. So if you've seen my engine mount video that's where that goes there. So if this pipe's coming from the vacuum pump to the T-piece, the other part of the T, this is on a Euro 3 D5, the other part of the T then goes to the boost solenoid just here. So we've got your boost solenoid. Let me just take the camera. So there's the boost solenoid there, and I've done videos where I take this apart. So the vacuum line is this from the T piece this one here and it supplies vacuum into the boost solenoid. The boost solenoid is then electronically controlled by the engine computer and there's a plunger in there and that allows that vacuum that's being fed to then come back out of the boost solenoid on this one here and this then goes behind the engine and that goes to the turbo actuator and I've recently done a turbo actuator testing video. So that is how the turbo is basically uh, controlled. The VNT mechanism on the turbo and the wastegate, that's how it's controlled with the vacuum system on the Euro 3D5. And, um, and that's that. Now if you've got a Euro 4, you won't have a boost solenoid. The, the turbo actuator is an electric motor uh, which moves the arm on the turbo so don't go looking for that if you've got a Euro 4 onwards uh, it's only Euro 3 that's vacuum actuated but if you have got a Euro 4 you will still have the vacuum pump because your brakes are vacuum assisted and the vacuum pump will still have this hose coming out of it because you still have vacuum engine mounts on a Euro 4 and onwards, you still have vacuum engine mounts and they're still fed by this valve here, but that's really all there is to it on the Euro 4. So if you've got that D5 popping noise on a Euro 4, your options are quite limited. You can put a vacuum tester directly onto the vacuum pump with the engine running and you just want to check the needle goes to full reading on the vacuum tester and uh, and it holds it there if you've got any flickering of the needle then you've got a leak in the vacuum pump uh, one of the seals and uh, the seals can be replaced or you can replace the whole vacuum pump um, if you've got the Euro 3 and you've got the popping noise well we've already covered how if I if I cover that if it's due to the engine mounts that stops the popping noise but if that doesn't work for you then you've got to start tracing vacuum leaks to other parts of the system. So once again, like the Euro 4, you would start 
at the vacuum pump. If you've got vacuum loss there, there's your answer. If you haven't got vacuum loss at the vacuum pump, but you've got vacuum loss elsewhere, then you literally have to test each part. You have to pull off connectors, pull off pipes, block them, block off the pipes, put the vacuum tester onto the other end of the pipes, pull a vacuum, see if you're losing vacuum through the pipes, they can get split very easily. They're also in a hot engine bay, so they can, you know, deteriorate. So you can check for vacuum loss on the pipes themselves, and the vacuum pump, and the turbo control valve, and there's a separate video showing you how to test your engine mounts for vacuum loss. So, um, not exactly in a nutshell, seeing as it was six minutes long, but it's just an easier way of showing you the vacuum system whilst I've got the engine uh, slightly pulled apart. And I hope you find that useful. Thanks for watching.